Hello everyone, welcome to the GO Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the GO Ecologist. So, in today's session on settlement geography, we are going to talk about a very interesting concept of rural-urban fringe. The concept, the theories and various contributions of different scholars and several terminologies related to the rural-urban fringe we are going to discuss in today's session. And also at the end, we are going to talk about the methods to delineate the rural-urban fringe as well. So, watch the video till the end and before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's understand the concept of rural urban fringe. Now the word itself is rural urban. It means there is a combination of rural as well as urban and the word is fringe that is externality or the edge right. So rural urban fringe is also known by these words outskirts, urban, peri-urban or many times urban hinterland as well. So this can be simply described as the landscape interface between town and countryside. Now this is the word to catch here interface or we can say the front right. So interface is between two different entities. So rural areas and urban areas and in between they have an interface. So this in betweenness that is what we call as the fringe, rural urban fringe, right? And also many times it's referred to as the transition zone where urban and rural uses of land is there. It means it's an area of mixed land use. So alternately, it can also be viewed as landscape type in its own right because it's also unique in its own way and one forged from an interaction of urban and rural land uses that is the description that we know. So now let's look into this diagram and understand this is the city core and then this is the city fringe as you go away from the core and then this is the rural area. So what we understand is that if you go to the rural area from urban area in between this fringe area will be there which will have a mixture of land usage. So the term fringe includes all population centers within census metropolitan area. Now remember C M A S and also they have less than 10,000 persons and are not contiguous with the core or secondary core that is according to the Statistics Canada. So if you observe the Canadian definition or the American definition this is how it's understood. So in simple ways we can understand that rural urban fringe is basically a transition zone or an in-between space between a rural area and a core urban area. So let's look into this particular diagram made by Bryant et al and that is 1982 and from then it has been modified several times. So this diagram is what explains it. So this is the core area of urban and then you have the core built up area around it and then it starts the inner fringes of the city. As you go away from the core built up area of the city, the fringe area starts. So first there is an inner fringe and then there is an outer fringe, right? An outer fringe connects with the shadows of urban area. The word urban shadow is also prominently used at many places where you just have the impressions of some kinds of urban services. It's not urban, but some services are related to the urban. So it's a shadow. Right? And then you have the rural hinterland which is completely rural. So this area is in between area of the core urban area, core rural area and in between space. Right? In simple way. So what you understand? The fringe, the word itself, the term used to denote an area or line of limit between rural and urban areas. And it can also be understood as an encroachment or you can say urban sprawl of urban land into rural land. Now this urban sprawl is a very important phenomena as the urbanization takes up the world. Urban area starts to expand and starts to eat away the nearby lands. Right? So nearby lands are rural in category. Now they are being covered by urban area. So there is a phase of transition when it's neither completely rural or nor completely urban. That's where the fringe comes into the picture. Right? And basically we talk about it when we talk about problems of expanding city. So if you observe this particular diagram, this is urban center. And this is urban rural fringe here, right, which is very important. And the intensity of urbanization as you go away from the core to the fringe to the rural area, what happens? The intensity of urbanization decreases, right? It's high intensity zone, moderate intensity zone, low intensity zone in terms of the intensity of urbanization. Now, what is this intensity of urbanization? 
urban services right the urban land usage the urban way of living many times it's also called urbanism urban way of life so when this urban way of life mixes with ruralism rural way of life it becomes urban or rural urban fringe right that's how the connotation is and there are many ways of looking into it for example many scholars like burgess call it a peripheral zone it's in the periphery of main urban area or census of india defines it as out urban area as a phrase as well so to understand in prominence let's understand evolution of this concept of this fringe so how it evolved the terminologies so right from von thunen's concept which we have learned in models and theories remember go to the playlist of models and theories if you want to learn von thunen's concept in details where he talks about a single market area and the land usage around it right so there he talks about in 1826 about the concentric zonations which are outskirts of the main concentration urban area then further scholars like jonasson douglas mckinsey park burgess mckay then you have christeller and so many other people like homer hoyt charles colby and so many other people you have heard in urban theories and settlement theories and economic theories who talked about some kind of association of the core urban area with its peripheral zone in terms of extension of its service is provision of market provision of its various other economic and other health services education services so what we look at is the core urban area starts to have a linkage between its nearby the peripheral zone right so tl smith is credited to be using this word urban fringe for the first time in 1937 tl smith and he said that it is an area outside the administrative limit the main municipality or administrative unit of the city the area just outside it he defined it in that way then salter came in and he said it's a mixture of land use both urban and rural in 1940 then we have verwin in 1942 who actually made a lot of work and diagrams is related to it and he recognized the rural urban fringe as a very unique entity in 1942 so verwin's work is very important in that way then further if you observe balk kurz and fletcher rusvam they all talked about the rural urban fringe in their own ways and further if you observe the great scholar wissink he gave some more terms in 1960s that is fringe suburbs pseudo suburbs then further they talked about in area of great differentiation this is what is very famous of 19 62 by wissink the area of great differentiation means diversity of land use changing land use prominently just outside the city right so that's where we talk about and then verwin again talked about the suburbia or suburban development which was prominent after the world war second most of the cities were being restructured and suburban development near urban development peri urban development outskirts development were common around the world cities the big urban centers right so that's what we learn in the evolution of the concept and further if you observe the urban fringe mostly is characterized by certain things which are very unique right so if you observe it will have these things which are listed here you can read it out road especially motorways and bypasses then you have waste transfer stations park and ride sites airports large hospitals power and water and sewage facilities factories large out of town shopping facilities and large supermarkets now basically what happens when the town gets congested so features or service providers who require more land they shift to the outskirts to the sub urban area right so they purposefully move to the you know away from the urban area or core urban area that's where the land use change comes into the picture around the main city area so what you observe there are certain factors for the development of this rural urban fringe and by now i'm sure you know the factors that population increase obviously increase in income and wealth then occupational change transportation and communication technology changes increased investments in infrastructure new factories new establishments shopping complexes and several other things being established around a city which has an interconnection and if you remember in india the metropolitan cities alongside highways and their connectivity with the satellite towns or nearby suburban areas it's very important in today's world 
right? Now the metro services are coming across the peri-urban areas. So what you observe, there are different kinds of factors that we need to know. So growth of rural urban fringe, apart from these five factors, can be grouped into two separate themes. Like one is called external factors and one is internal factors. The list is here. You can pause the video and you can read it, the list of same factors in different ways. So internal factors are the factors within the core area of the city that leads to its expansion and external is the outskirt factors. So increasing cost of land in the core area, environmental degradation, congestion, all those things lead to expansion. And what is there in the outskirt? In outskirt, commuter zone is there where people every day go to the main city and they come back. So commuting facility, development of transport corridors, right? And low cost of land, free municipal taxes, environmental stability, all those things are very prominent in the outskirts of the city. It means it's an attraction. Right? For people who want to get settled outside the main city, they want to get decongested, it's very important. So these are the two factors, if you say internal and external factors, which are the driving factors in that way. Then further, if you observe, what are the various types? So rural urban fringe has majorly been described as being two types. One is called primary urban fringe. If you observe the primary urban fringe is the belt that touches outer administrative limit, which we say inner fringe which is in close proximity or connectivity with the main administrative boundary of the city, right? And many times Myers and Beagle and other scholars have called it a true fringe or inner fringe by white line. And if you observe the secondary urban fringe is the next one in the line that is related to the outside primarily, right? So outskirts where prox proximity with outskirt, it means rural hinterland is more, is the secondary. So primary fringe is more of urban, secondary fringe is more of rural. That's where the further subclassification has been done, right? Then what you observe is the structure of this rural urban fringe. And if you observe this concentric zonations, in this way you can try to understand, although this concentric zonation has been criticized because this kind of sharp distinction is not available on the line. There is always an overlap of these zones. But to understand, you can say that urban fringe is a particular area which is close to the urban main mega city. Then what you have is further the rural fringe which is close to the rural area. Then you have something called the urban shadow that we talked about already. That is a perspective area where fringe will expand and it will witness the rising pressure on the land. And urban facilities will be there but not urbanization as a process is completely there. So it's just a shadow. Then further we have two more zones that is daily urban system that is the commuters zone that we say and the final that is the city region where the largest possible extent of urban services is there means after the city region there is decline of urban services so this is like a structure but this structure also has overlaps and also it's not in the way it has been portrayed here in the concentric zonation theory right so what we observe this is the basic idea to understand that if you go away from the core city how the fringe area you enter and then finally you go to the rural area right so to understand in simple way what are the benefits of this rural urban fringe for economic development if you look here cheaper land is there room for expansion is there little pollution and more attractive environment is there more green environment is there and also remember we talked about urban heat island in the core of the city so as you go away from this urban area heat islands are not there this area will also have heat islands which are very important in terms of human health then you have plenty of space for parking for housing and workers are available as they come from rural hinterland and also good accessibility from outside and also from urban area is very important thing. So this area is promoted at very important zone for newer age economic development because the older cities are now being congested and crowded. So outskirts are the new opportunities. That's what we learn as the main ideas or main benefits of this rural urban fringe area. But also if there are benefits, there are problems as well, right? So before we learn the problems, let's understand how to delimit this rural urban fringe or how to say that what is the area, how are we going to map it? So there are two ways to look into it. One is called empirical or observation method and one is called statistical methods, right? So if you observe empirical method is just by the way of observation of the services and all the things that we learned in the previous sessions also. So very traditional method, continuation of built up area and from where the built up area declines, that area is supposed to be read as the rural urban fringe. So scholars like Smith, Andrews, then several others like Martin Anderson and Pryor, Singh and Srivastava, all of them 
them worked in several areas and tried to find out the observation where they traveled from the core of the city and went to the outskirts and looked into how these fringes have developed or till what point there is a transition. And prominently what we learn in this observation method is a base point for the delimitation of zone. It means if there is a point from here till what point is the delimitation, right? Through these changes, changes in land use, changes in built up area, occupational structure changes, house type changes, list of essential services and distribution of educational services away from a core reference area of a city. That's what we look into the observation method. And then what we have is further for direct observation generally 10 to 20 kilometer away from municipal limits of the city is taken for the study in general connotation. And then further what we observe is the statistical methods of this delimitation. Now here calculations are involved, data analysis is involved. So indexing method, mean center method, correlation method, distance decay analysis, gravity analysis, all these models that we have been talking right from models and theories in human geography till the previous lecture in urban settlement systems as well, we have known that these statistical methods have been used spatially popularized during quantitative revolution in geography. So what you observe, there are many people who have done studies of isochrone like MMP Sinha and several other people like Ram Lochan Singh who was professor at Varanasi. He worked on the city of Varanasi and many people on the fringes of Patna and several other cities have worked in India and also abroad as we looked in the list of the scientists in the evolution of the concept. So what you observe, there are certain problems also associated with this fringe area because these areas are not directly under the control of a central authority. They are in the outskirt. So a lot of crime related problems are also there. A lot of irregularity and sometimes a lot of pollution due to a lot of construction happens. So many issues are also there that needs to be taken up for the fringe area development. So now when we have learned about the rural urban fringe and its various aspects in today's session, in the sessions to come, we'll be talking more on different other aspects of urban settlement systems. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep checking the playlists, keep watching the videos and do share the videos with others and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to promote us and also encourage us. So all the best wishes, take care.